The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. I have defeated every console that has come my way. Xbox, PlayStation, they all have fallen. Are you not entertained? Is there any console here that dare face me? Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. A very popular request for a build on The Ben Heck Show is to take an Ouya video game console and make it into a portable. The Ouya is an Android based gaming console that's kind of like a beefed up smartphone that's meant to be played on your TV with a controller. And this was on Kickstarter back in 2012, and they started shipping in 2013. So we're gonna take it apart, see what's inside, and try to make it portable. So it went from Android to home console, back to portable again. Weird. There we go. Hmm, looks like it's, it's just pretty much set in there in the slot. I don't believe this fan runs all the time, so we might be able to get away without it. One thing with the Ouya is uh, the processor or system on a chip is similar to a cell phone, but the Ouya doesn't have to assume it's on battery, so it can actually run a little faster and take more advantage of the graphic capabilities. All right. It's a power button, power indicator, 12 volts in. Then there's two regulators. One's 3.3 for the system on the chip. The other one is 1.8 volts for the RAM. Moral of the story is we don't need anywhere near 12 volts to run this thing. And this guy here is your ethernet port and mini USB, and then we got a regular USB port and an HDMI connection. The HDMI connection is through hole, which is kind of rare. We might be able to solder to that. I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to try to remove these ports though. Also, we see some power chokes here. This is going to be your main flash of eight gigabytes for your game storage, right there. This is probably your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module right here. And under this heatsink, of course, is the system on a chip. And you can also kind of see it peeking through here. This is going to be your system RAM right there. All right, I got this screen from eBay. My assistant Felix located it and I ordered it. It's a uh, pretty good size, it's around seven inches. It's actually kind of hard to find small LCDs because anything small is usually for a cell phone and then you know you can't hook up normal stuff like HDMI to it. Uh, it has a touch screen layer on it which probably could work with the Ouya but I'm going to remove it because it actually adds about a eighth inch of thickness. Also it's just resistive, it's not that great. All right, on the back here, there's some ports. Uh, obviously we have our power input. Our HDMI is what we're gonna be looking at. What we might be able to do is remove the plug to save some height. And uh, most of the connections from the HDMI go to these, what I assume are probably mm, either diodes or a transistor of some type right here. But the point is there's pads we could solder to. So I think we might actually be able to um, remove this and actually hand solder the HDMI connections directly to these surface mount components. That way we might not need an HDMI plug, which is actually quite large in the grand scheme of things. This is some sort of wanky VGA connector. We can remove that. Most of the capacitors have already been uh, mounted sideways, so that's good. I'm not sure if this uses uh, LED backlight. It probably is. I don't see an inverter circuit on here. And this can be made thinner. There's a good quarter inch of spacing fluff, literally foam, in between this and the metal. So I think we can compact this down a pretty good amount. I'm not sure what this wire is for. Probably these screens when you buy them are usually intended to be used in your car. So this wire could be your, uh, you know, constant power voltage source. All right, so this is going to be your data going to the screen. We don't need this. Yeah, I think we could flatten this out pretty good. This is all through hole, so we shouldn't have too much trouble removing it. Even the HDMI, 
We'll desolder the through hole ground planes for mounting purposes and then we can just heat up the pins and lift it off. And then the touch screen is probably, we have an adhesive strip. I should be able to remove it. It's getting thinner already. There's also a controller, which we're not gonna take apart yet, but I know from experience, uh, there's basically a small Bluetooth module in there, which is about like that big. So we can basically rebuild the controller any way we want. So I'm thinking for a unit, be like this, and then we'll flare out the sides so your thumb buttons will be here, but we'll try to make it as compact as possible. The Ouya unit itself will either put it in the center or off to the side, probably in the center, because if we keep this area thin, keep it as thin as possible except for where it can't be thin. As far as the batteries are concerned, probably have two across the bottom like that, very much like the Raspberry Pi portable that I did. Pew, 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 pew. So using my X-Acto knife to carefully cut the adhesive and not scratch the screens. This is a resistive touch screen. You can tell by the four wires coming off of it. And that's the old school type of touch screen. That's kind of like what's on your Nintendo DS. I'm not gonna break down this LCD too far before we test it because we want to make sure it works with the OUYA and works at a lower voltage. Then we will optimize it. I'm just gonna remove this adhesive. It's a very appealing process. There, you got your dumb joke. <laughs> Let's see what kind of current this LCD requires. What we'll do is we'll plug it in, but we have one of the Wires disconnected. I'll switch over the multimeter to measure current. There we go. Now I'm going to complete the circuit and then we'll see what this draws. I complete the circuit with the multimeter. There we go. Okay, it looks like a peak of about uh, 320 milliamps. It's not too bad. They borrowed the king I heard and they also witches. One of them really mean. I'm using my variable bench supply now and I'm going to see if it runs at 7.2 volts. Uh, that's the voltage of a lithium ion battery. So if it can run at that low voltage, that'd be cool. And I think it will because we looked at the regulators online, their specs, and it says that they can go down to six volts, low dropout. So let's see what happens. Oh, it turned on, yay. Actually, we can just, there. So lower voltage means higher amps, but I think we're still in the ballpark of what is feasible. I think if we can stay like 800 milliamps total, OUYA end screen, we're okay. So we should probably check the OUYA next and see what it draws. All right, I've got the OUYA booted up. I'm running it on the screen. Uh, menu selection takes a lot of power. Yeah, I think, I've, actually, let me see what games I have. I think I have Pinball Arcade on here. Yep. We'll run a game and see what the power consumption is. It's updating the game. That's probably what's taking a lot of the power. So Wi-Fi takes a lot of power. Let's run the game. So yeah, it, uh, it varies, but around 500 milliamps. <sighs> Remember that OUYA is not intended to save power. That's gonna kind of work against us. All right, but we know that the OUYA and the screen works. What we should actually look for next to see if there's some built-in speakers on this screen that can use the HDMI audio. If you're a fan of my show or are into electronics, you've probably heard of the Raspberry Pi. The credit card size computer is very affordable, has endless applications, and I've done some exciting builds with it myself on the show. Now, thanks to a new five-part video series by Element 14, getting started with the Raspberry Pi has never been easier. Each of the videos covers important issues, provides demonstrations, and answers questions. Video one unboxes the Pi and gets it set up and running. In video two, they explore the Pi in action. In video three, they take the Pi online. Video four provides programming instructions, and video five reviews apps, projects, resources, and more. 
The series is really a great resource for those new to the Raspberry Pi or those who want to take their knowledge to the next level. Visit element14.com forward slash get started with Pi to view the series. You can also pick up your own Pi, Pi kits, and Pi accessories at element14.com. Engage with hundreds of thousands of engineers, join discussions, and share projects, and enjoy many free resources. I look forward to seeing what you come up with with your Raspberry Pi. Head over to element14.com forward slash get started with Pi today and enjoy. I believe this jack is meant for a speaker. This integrated circuit here, we looked it up and it is a audio amplifier of some type. So we should be able to hook up a speaker here and get sound from the HDMI. I hope we can. Well, the speaker works. I don't think it's really the appropriate speaker to use, but we know we can hook a speaker up. That's the important thing. I've removed the PCB from the back of the LCD. It's kind of confusing. And what I'm gonna do now is break this down as much as I can. Just gonna remove these ports for now and the speaker. I mean, we're not gonna actually use that speaker. I definitely wanna remove this VGA port. That's pretty useless. So hopefully this desoldering iron works. Yeah, it doesn't do too bad. The real trick are gonna be these support pins. We could always grind those off if we had to. I don't want to do it that way, but we may have to. When you're desoldering, especially with lead-free, you wanna make sure you give it enough time to actually reflow the solder. Not just the solder you see, but the solder in the via, and also there'll be solder on the other side, on the other pad as well. So we're gonna have to remove these main tabs a different way. Before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that these pins are all loose. Uh, not only that I can see, you know, a black hole around them, but that they also move. This one's a little iffy, but it should be all right. Yeah, there it goes. Get it click, I heard it move. So what I'm gonna do for these guys, so I'm actually gonna Dremel them off. The reason I do that is so there's less mass that has to be pulled through the board. There, see? It's an easy way to do it if your desoldering iron isn't hot enough. To be safe, maybe I shouldn't remove the HDMI because the length of the board, there's things that I can't move like these um, coils. Anyway, so the HDMI is not the highest thing on the board anyway, so I think I might just leave it. But I still need to find good places to wire it to because I don't want to use the plug, that's too bulky. Basically, I look at it on end and if there's anything that is taller than everything else, like this connector, then I remove it. And the pitch of that connector, it's pretty small, so I'm just gonna heat it up. And I'm not even gonna bother to solder each pin. I'll just heat up all the pins and pry it out. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. I'm gonna try to remove a few parts from the OUYA now, such as this ethernet port we'll never use. Oh, looks like it'll desolder just fine. This, this last pin here probably is an internal ground plane, so I'm just gonna heat it up and then pull off the plug. Now it's time to go for it. There's a combination HDMI USB connector here, and I'm going to remove it. I'm gonna desolder what I can, but it'll probably be a little tricky. I'm gonna get these guys heated up. Try not to breathe the smoke. So most modern PCBs have multiple layers to them, like ogres. And uh, when there's internal ground planes, you know, they're there, you can't see them. But it just makes it more difficult to remove uh, components because, you, yeah, most components are to the top or the bottom, but 
the internal ground planes you can't see. So, and that means there's more copper mass inside the board, meaning it takes more heat in order to heat up the solder there is because the solder, I'm sorry, the copper will sink all the heat. But, and you know, make it that much longer before the solder melts. So you have to apply more heat for a longer amount of time. These are actually coming pretty good. So my plan of attack here is I'm going to completely desolder these four support headers, which are basically just ground connections. And I'll also desolder the USB. And then I'll just heat up all of the HDMI pins at once and then slowly ease it out because this tool is far too coarse to get those HDMI pins. When I show you that I just don't care When I'm throwing trash cat in the air Those two are being a little iffier, but I, I'll get them. If you look here, there's a ground every three pins. So you've got a differential pair, differential pair, differential pair, and then some other data stuff. So we don't actually have to hook up all of these connections, just the differential pairs and then some ground references. And we should be able to re-solder the USB somewhere else as well. I'm just gonna reflow on the top here to make the pins you know, receive wires. I'll clean up the flux afterwards. You can see how the um, through holes that don't have ground planes take the solder a lot easier because there's less mass, therefore the solder flows. So that's where we have to attach our wires. Before I do any wiring, I printed these little uh, spacers. And what these will do is ensure the gap is sufficient between the two objects so that they don't, you know, basically interfere with each other. There's a few things such as those uh, chokes, they're a little thick, so we don't want any short circuits. So this gives us nice breathing room. Once I have the positioning ready, I can start doing the HDMI to HDMI connection, which is the real key. And I have to do it in such a way that uh, the wires are as short as possible, but, we, but you can still kind of move it or take it apart. So that's gonna be the real trick. These are the wires for everything but the twisted pairs on the HDMI. And I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on them to kind of wrangle them so they stay flat as possible. All right, there are four twisted pairs and an HDMI connector, and I've wired them up. And I actually put these wires in straight because it made it a little easier to put them through. But now that they're all in place, now I'll twist them. So these are basically the image data wires. And then we're going to add the other wires down on this side. Okay, we have the twisted pairs. They come down here and I've glued them to this, to this kind of a hinge point because we want to be able to get at this thing. So the Ouya is going to end up right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring these down and we'll secure them with a little bit of hot glue to the lower circuit board and then we'll bring them around to these points to connect. So then when we put it together, we can do that. And then the other data wires we can bring over this way and up. The HDMI ports have been manually combined. You can see in there how they've been combined using as short of wires as possible. I've also tied the Ouya's power into the LCD's power, so there's just one power connector going into both of them. This isn't quite secured yet, but that's okay. We can still do a demonstration. And this wire here is the Ouya's power button. Okay, let's hook it up to the bench power supply. Gonna run it at uh, 7.5 volts, which is what a battery would be. All right, the LCD will probably turn on first. All right, let's turn on the Ouya by holding down the button. Beep. Oh yeah, there it is. Ouya, I don't have the speaker hooked up. So the Ouya said to me, I want you to draw me like one of your French consoles. So I took the Ouya and I made an actual size drawing around it, which will give me a good reference of how the case will be shaped in reality. And these were drawn from life. I'm adding the sticks, the D-pad. In the next episode, we'll 3D print or laser cut this case, build the Ouya into it, and add a power supply. We'll see you then.
I'd rather get the connections off of here. So I'm gonna make sure all the connections are represented over here. Is that my smoke? So I shouldn't say anything incriminating, right? All right, let's record again now that I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> the Ben Heck Show was brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> <laughs>